Let's open our Bibles while standing to the book of Jude, verse number 11. There's only one chapter. I'll be speaking on a subject today that is very important. Today is our Hallelujah Sunday. That Sunday in the month where we come together to celebrate, we dress in our native attire as my pastors have done today. We are not ashamed of being called Nigerians or Africans. We need to change our minds with respect to being smart. When I was in Bible school, and I attended two Bible schools, by the way, we were taught that preachers should dress smartly, and smartly means suit. And we believe that when you're suit, in suit, you're smart. When you're a native, you're not smart. So I don't know how somebody messed up with our minds. The native attire is not smart. I had plan to wear what I call Wakanda forever today. My, my fashion designer couldn't get my Wakanda forever outfit ready. I, I, and he's in trouble. That guy is in trouble. Believe you me, he's in trouble. I, I told him on Tuesday, you got to get it ready. He said, yes sir. I called him on Wednesday, is he ready? He said, don't worry daddy. By weekend you're going to get it. I said, I'm going to be in church on Saturday to pick my Wakanda forever outfit. Something unique. And then I called the fellow. How far now, oh boy? Oh boy, how far now? I bet remember that's me now. And he said, Daddy, I'm still working on the beads. I said, you're, not, you're in trouble. I said, you know, next week you come to my office, you're in trouble. I know, sir, I'm in trouble. So I couldn't get my Wakanda forever outfit ready. So, but, but I'm trying to change <clears throat> my, out, my looks. So in the next couple of months, you see me dress differently, a bit more African than Western. At the same time, smart. So we want to, and formal. We don't want to casualize ministry. I don't want to come to the pulpit with torn jeans because I'm anointed. I don't need to dress any house. The anointing that breaks the yoke, not the jeans. Oh, well, I get it. I get it. But your appearance matters as well. So I'm going to appreciate us. We need to change this. I've been working on this for a while. And I need to get people that, that have the right this up there. We use the word of God to renew our minds. So today's topic is a bit deep. So I need you please to follow me. Because it's here. Many of you do this, but you know you do it. Many of you are in it. But you need to open your mind and listen to the word. Please, listen to the word. Not me. Check verse and scriptures I'm going to give to you. To say, am I a rebel or am I just radical? Am I radical or a rebel? Jude 11th verse. Give it to me, Midah, if you don't mind. It says, woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. Not the word way. And they ran greedily after the error of Balaam. Note the word, from going in the way, you turn to running. Steps, when you make them faster, becomes running. They went in the way, going, becomes the run, greedily. Then if you go and you run like this, you will perish. And perished in the rebellion of Korah. I'll read it again. Three characters mentioned. And three different phrases used for them. They went in the way of Cain. You know Cain and Abel, don't you? And that moved into running after the greed of, greedily after the error of Balaam. And they ended up perished in the rebellion of Korah. You can't tell me that's an accidental, the way the Lord spoke to the brother of Jesus. Jude was the brother of Jesus. There was accident. It wasn't accidental. So today I'm picking one rebellion of Quran. I'm not picking greed. I've spoken about greed a thousand times here. I'm not speaking about Cain. Be your brother's keeper. We're not our brother's keepers anyway. But let's talk about rebellion. Heavenly Father, we pray that you'll speak to us today Amen. in the name of Jesus. We want to hear your voice, not man. We want to be submitted to your authority. We don't want to be rebels. We want to submit to your authority. Help us, Lord. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Put your hands together for Jesus as you sit in God's presence. Radical or rebel? Rebel or radical? Seven signs that you're a rebel. Seven signs. Seven. I'm sharing with you seven signs. If you see those signs in your life, you're a rebel, not a radical. Let me first of all differentiate those two phrases, those two words, radical and rebel. Many years ago, I was just growing up in faith. And then I was a youth leader in the big church. And um, I had all kinds of people that had different views about me. So we were supposed to go for a camp, a camp meeting, big camp meeting. And so there was some issue, political upheaval, that we couldn't go for that camp meeting. We couldn't go for that camp meeting. I think it was uh, the June 12 issue. And so the church had cancelled it. The headquarters church cancelled the camp meeting. And the headquarters church usually will go with other churches. They merge them with a bigger group called Zone. So some leaders came and said, sir, we want to go. We are our leader. Lead us to camp. We don't, even though the leadership has cancelled it, we can still say, no, we can't go without leadership. I know we can achieve it, but we need the permission of our leaders. So I approached our senior pastor then, late, this is Rebayo, Dr. Rebayo, and I said, sir, that we can go. We can do this. You give us the permission to go. You are our senior pastor. Permit us to go. I promise you, sir, I will lead this group of people by 500 to the camp, and I'll bring them back. Safe and sound. But I said, there is, there is a river. There is riot. I said, daddy, we will be okay. We want to go and pray. So daddy said, go ahead. Listen, my pastor said, go ahead. But don't forget, I said to you, the youth ministries were under a particular zone called Shomolu. So the Shomolu person is superior to me. So he said, I, I heard that Kasali is leading people in this church to go there without his permission. Not knowing, my own guy is senior to him. My guy said, go. He's my pastor. So he was angry and he wrote a memo to the general say I was not even a pastor. That there's a, rat, there's a rebel in the headquarters church that must be disciplined. So one day, I went to meet him as a Ghanaian pastor. So he called for me shortly before the meeting. So I went to see him and, and I stood in his office. And he said, are you the Kasali? I said, yes, sir. Are you the man? I said, yes, sir. I heard you are the one leading rebellion. I said, no, sir. So I explained my part to him, my vision, my people, and what I went through. And my pastor had said, go. Then the man sat for 10 minutes. And after speaking to me, he said, ah, you are not a rebel now. What they told me about you is different. I think you are radical. That was the first person that told me, I'm radical, not a rebel. He said, you're a radical man. You're not a rebel. I said, yes, sir. I'm radical, not a rebel. <laughs> I said, yes, sir. I'm radical, not a rebel. He said, go. Everything I've heard about you is wrong. He said, you're a principled man, but you are under authority. I won't forget it. We had like one hour. He said, you're very principled. And you're going to go places. I don't know where the man is today. I had one meeting with him. I saw him a few times. Later. Reverend Nath Dadze. I can't forget his name. Nath Dadze. Reverend Nath Dadze. I was not even a pastor. He said, you're very principled. You're a radical person. He said, this church needs people like you. We need radical leaders. But you're not a rebel. Go. I was misinformed. I said, thank you, sir. We went. It was a tough one, actually. We almost died. But we came back safe and sound. So what is the difference between radical and rebel? So years after, I was with my father in the Lord, Bishop Michael Konko, we were having a meeting about PFN and this and that. So he said to me, Yomi, what do we do? I said, Daddy, don't put me there because I'm radical, but not a rebel. You know, I would never do anything outside authority. But the moment I'm given the authority, I would do things differently. Did you get the difference? I would never do anything outside authority. But once I have authority, I will do things. I'm a radical, not a rebel. There's a thin line between both. How do I know if you're a rebel in the name of radical? What's the difference? Because rebellion 
is a sin. It's not of God. That's what you don't want to hear. It's a sin. How do I know if you're a rebel or a radical? What, how do we define radicals? And today, it has become a political word, radical. The Italians of Muslims extremists are radicalized into becoming terrorists. Because in other words, they've gone to the extreme of doing things differently. They're not radicalized. They're rebels. They're rebels. They come and cloak themselves and say, we're radicals. No, you're a rebel because you're fighting constituted authority. The things you are doing are against the law. You can't tell me you're a radical when you are killing people. You're a rebel. You're a killer. You're a murderer. You're a terrorist. But we're looking at this definition of radical because I want to go into scriptures. Then eventually I will then run up to the seven signs because I don't want you to be a rebel and you think God will bless you. You will never, ever, God will never bless a rebel. Caught me anywhere. What you are enjoying, that's a problem with you Christians. What you are enjoying is what unbelievers are enjoying and you call it a blessing. There's something called the goodness of God. So what's the goodness of God? Say it again. Shout it. Unbelievers are enjoying goodness of God. Matthew chapter 5. Last verse. He said, last few verses. You make your son to shine upon the just and the unjust. You give your rent to the just and the unjust. That is the goodness of So you may be enjoying that goodness. You call it blessing. But I know from scripture, God will never bless a rebel. The moment you are in rebellion, God cuts you off. Quote me, God cuts you off. Even if you go to a good church, you are in rebellion, God cuts you off. It's not possible, it's there. It's not possible that God will bless a rebel. No, it's not, no, it's not possible. For rebellion is a sin. 1 Samuel 15, it's as a sin of witchcraft. 1523, 1 Samuel. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Is there as a sin? It's not saying rebellion is witchcraft, too. And in those days, they said, Let no witch live, kill them. Witchcraft was one of the highest sins in the land. So for Saul, somewhere to be approaching Saul, said, Saul, you are rebellious. Don't you know rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, stubbornness as iniquity. Some of you are stubborn with pride. You say it with you say it with joy. Me, I don't go agree. Me, I just stubborn. Tell pastor, we church. I beg. I'm a stubborn person. <laughs> you are quoting stubbornness as a virtue. When the Bible says it's wrong, it's there in my Bible, my own Bible. Maybe you maybe it's deleted your Bible. Check it. If it's not there, you are carrying the wrong Bible. We need to throw that one out. Rebellion is a sin. And people are asking me, I have not committed fornication. Oh, you're a rebel. Because your understanding of sin is only fornication in your life. There are Christians that don't see lying as sin. They say only fornication. Rebellion is a sin. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, rebellion is a sin. If you don't like me, don't like me. I'm quoting and reading my Bible. My Bible tells me rebellion is a sin. The Bible tells us the devil was a false rebel. The devil rebelled against, against God. Against God's authority. Rebellion is to say I don't like authority. I fight authority. I will do it my own way. American system is collapsing because they are rebelling against God. You don't know that. They are rebelling against God. They are pushing individuality, independence above any other thing. Anytime somebody says no authority, that's the beginning of rebellion. The key word is authority. I'm going to go there. I'm coming no. I'm coming no. I'm coming no. Because I was told in this passage, and I said even God, uh, I love God. You know I love God. God says, look at me, look at me. Authority is mandatory. But watch me. I give you the right to choose who you will be under authority. But to be without authority, I will kill you. Choose whom you will serve. Okay, don't serve me. <laughs> but serve something. You 
Shalom, you're not you're not the authority. You are a rebel. You make it look like it's okay. You are a rebel. You are not under anybody's authority. Ask yourself, not one person on earth. Are you God? Only God exists without being under anybody's authority. You have become your own God. Only God. The one that tried it was a devil. God pushed him out. Go and start your own church. When we started Fota, I approached my general here. He's dead now. He told me, go. Fuck it, daddy. Where? Go ask. This story is everywhere. Because I believe in authority all my life. All my life. I'm very anointed. But I also believe in authority. Anointing will be the only thing, no? Young people pray, pray, daddy. They place anointing above everything. They place gift and talent above everything. What's wrong with us? Are you the first gifted person? The devil was gifted. The devil is gifted. It's in the Bible. Anointed Jeru. Gifted singer. So that you what you have the devil has big life for now. And then give them playing the anointing. I don't know why anointed now. Rebels. I went to meet him, Shesson. He gave me three dates. Each one of those dates I submitted to Baba. November, yes, sir. No, you're Miss February. Yes, sir. I'm moving to April. Yes, sir. Leave town. Yes, sir. Ask the record. Daddy, as you want me to just bless me as I go. That's all. One week, Pastor Teru, the week of our starting photo, May 22nd, Pastor Bakari called me because it was not like commission on this church. You're me, you're me. I said, yes, sir. And next week, no. Yes. No. The, before April 1st, he said, ah, but they just called me now to say he didn't give you final permission. I said, me, I showed you letters. He said, he told me, I said, that didn't worry. I'm going to meet him now. I called him. Daddy, I'm coming to see you. 11 midnight. 12 minutes, said, sir. Pastor Bakari called me and said, this, this, this. Are you so angry with me? He said, no, you're me. I don't mind today. I know I mind the move. <laughs> Pastor Bakari is alive, not dead. What I'm saying can go to him. I said, no, I cannot. You have to. I'm under author. As I'm leaving this authority of the first square gospel church, I'm going to start something, I will still submit myself to another man's authority. I will submit myself to another man's authority. I won't just be alone because I know the word. I am the anointed and can cast out devils. I told him. He said, kneel down. He blessed me. That's the secret of my blessing. The people I worked under, all of them blessed me. Frank Onuzo of Blessed Memory, Bade Joe, or Rebayo. Not one of them fought me. Go and check history. I'm a blessed man. I understand the secrets of blessings. Young people don't understand it. The place anointing above blessing. <laughs> rebellion. There are so many people, older people too, that are rebellious. Rebellion. And if you grab, I don't need anybody. You know that's not the thing. It's my life. I live my life. I don't know what the song is saying. I have my life. Eh? Uh, what song shall well, it's my life? I do I live my life my own way. You know? I live the life that I want. <laughs> Go and live the life that you want. <laughs> Praise God. Let me tell you, I, I wrote my note. I said radicals are people who advocate thorough and complete overhaul of his system towards yielding what is considered positive outcome. I'm radical. Let's change the way we do things here. But I will not say let's change. Let's fight the system. Let's change things. Let's do things differently. Let's do things in a new way. That's what I mean to be radical. I'm radical, not a rebel. Do you get the point now? Let's change things we do. So, being, being radical does not mean you shouldn't have an idea of how things can be done. Let's change our administration in choir. Let's wear white, not red. Let's do things differently. And that's what it means to be radical, too. Not to think, to think outside the box. But rebellion is different. You can be radical, not be rebel. I'm going to show you now. Radicals. Our Lord Jesus, I wrote here, was radical, not a rebel. That shocked you, right? Jesus was a revolutionary. He was radical, not a rebel. Oh, but sir, he fought the system. Who told you that? When he healed the leper, he said, go and offer to the priests. As it is commanded to according to the law. 
Go and, go and, go and give to the priest. To the priesthood. It's there. I'm not here, say I'm here to fulfill the law, not to say the law does not exist. It was radical. Do you know when in Matthew 26, when they were about to arrest Jesus, he says to me, I could have called 12 legions of angels. You miss that. But I'm submitting to authority. I'm submitting to what? Pilate's authority arrest me. Not that I, I, I can call angels now. They will defend me. But I will not do it. You are in charge. Take me home. Take me. Jesus. Hey, but sir, in the temple, when he went to remove the place and he jumped that thing, oh yes, he was saying, let's change. This is not how this will be done. Do let's do it this way. He didn't say they should remove the priest, they become the priest. There's a way to become in priesthood. He didn't change that. He didn't fight them. He, he was not happy with the way they ran the church, but he was careful. So he won't be seen as somebody trying to say, let's be rebels. He didn't have it. He didn't train rebels. Who. In fact, one time, in Matthew 17, verse 26, that, remember that passage, where they came and said, they told us to come and pay tribute. Ah, ah, ah. Peter, Peter, of whom do they take tribute? Of children or strangers? Peter said they should be taking tribute from strangers. He said, but shh, lest we offend them, I beg, go and pay. Go to the ocean, get the fish. Let us obey the system. Let us obey the system. Do you get the point now? Lest we offend them. I don't want to honor. So they won't say, I'm breaking the law. No, no, I beg. A few times he told them, Look, let's eat. Let's see that. They ate on the Sabbath day. Here on the Sabbath day. He was trying to say, Look, the Sabbath is not as important as, as the person, as, as the man that made it. You get the point now? He was more of a radical than a rebel. But we sometimes think he was a rebel. He wasn't a rebel, he was radical. Doing things differently. Phineas was a radical, not a rebel. Numbers 25, verse 6 to 12. He stood up. He didn't fight Moses. He didn't fight Aaron. He stood up to say, I don't like this sinner. He went to kill. That was radical. Let's stop all this nonsense. And there was, the plague was stopped. 24,000 people died. He took a javelin. Phineas. And God said, I like what you've done. While Moses and Aaron were still praying, he took action. So being a radical is okay. I'm radical. I like to do things differently. Does that make sense? But I'm not a rebel. Do you get the difference? Do you, are you getting the difference now? I need to give you more scripture so you can understand the difference between radical and rebel. They will not give you the signs of being a rebel. David was radical when he asked Saul, I need permission to fight Goliath. I'm anointed, but I will not go. Give me your platform. Because if Saul had said, don't go, I'm not going to be inside his pocket. I'm not going to be your pocket. He said, sir, can I go and fight Goliath? Are you sure you can fight him? Yes, sir. His man is a soldier. Sir, just give me the go ahead. I, I want to do what I will do. People will be surprised. I will go there and fight him. But I need your permission. Give me your permission. Give me your permission. The last radical in my note here that I like was Saul of Tarsus. Remember Saul of Tarsus? That became Paul. It was radical. The Bible says to us in Acts chapter 9, verse 1 to 3, that Paul sought permission from the priesthood. Give me letters. They wrote him letters. Yeah, go. Go and arrest them. He didn't just go start to fight people. I need to be under authority. What he did was radical. Changed the way things were being done. But he needed permission. They gave him letters. They gave him letters before God arrested him. Galatians chapter 2. Verse 2 to 15, I like it so much. To the point where when he became Paul, he still submitted to what? Authority. Watch me. He had, let me tell you why, why I like Paul. Paul had superior knowledge of the mystery of Christ. Superior revelation of the mystery of Christ. Yet he said in Galatians chapter 2, I went to meet Paul, sorry, Peter, James, and John, who were pillars. Give me Galatians 2, verse 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. He said, lest I had run or run in vain. So this is what I'm preaching. You see, I went up by revelation and communicated. Go back by revelation. If it is you, you won't even need anybody to give you permission. You say, God told me. God told me. Everybody here said, God told me. Every small thing, God told me. God. I hear people saying, God told me. Like God is too talkative. They say, have you, have, have you, have you had it, your number? They say, God told me for every small thing. So and I woke up that morning and God told me, wear red socks. <laughs> Not wear socks, wear red socks. I don't need God. I don't need God to wear 
wearing red socks now. I can wear socks. And as I was wearing the red socks, God said, the brown belt must be blue, not black belt. And so as I was coming to your house, God told me that you just pause and buy orange. So I bought the orange. I said, God said, pick your car. And as I was driving, God said, okay, stop again, okay, buy carrot. So I listened to them when they told me. In my mind, okay, after this thing got to me, so I will now come back after when I saw this carrot, red socks, orange you bought. Tell me what God now used it for. No, God just has just eat it. So you can tell me, when you say God told me, God did say God told me to every, and I'm like, you cannot say to you, I, I had an impression. I felt my heart. I had a hurt. Stop putting everything on God, God, God. Just I had an hurt. In many ways, I just felt me that you buy orange. But we put God so he can shut you up. Because when you say God, everybody say, I, I know them. I'm not always really scared. I'm always really careful about people like that. Every small thing, God told me, God told me, God told me, God, 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 and now. There are many things I don't say God told me. I said, I'm sure God told me. I don't say, I, I, I called you. I ah, miss Nancy. Nancy, how are you? I was say, God told me to call you. <laughs> what is wrong if I just call Nancy? Must, must God tell me to call Nancy? Are you with me? I'm not saying God does not speak to some people once in a while. Oh. Don't get me wrong. But I'm saying that you, know, you have people that say every small thing they do in their life is God told me. God told me. Then I run from them personally. Me, I just don't like it because I think it's a way of trying to sound super spiritual to shut. If God told you keep your mouth shut, don't tell us. Did God tell you to tell me? Then, then keep it, bitch. God, I told you, keep yourself, keep it your heart now. Don't come and convince me that you had God because God is talking to you, not to me. He told you to buy orange, you bought orange, you drank it. Why are you telling me? The only time you should tell me is if God said, Give me the orange. <laughs> I'm telling you, if the orange is for you, you bought it, you drank it, don't tell me. Keep it to yourself. This is your conversation and communication between you and eh. Praise God. It's important. Very important. Because it's rampant now. That's why we're in this mess. Everybody's prophesying. This is president, that's a governor, that's a counselor. Nobody can see prophecy for poor people. It's only rich people that are prophesying for I mean, I don't, it's rampant. But I see it every day. Everybody's saying, God told me, 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 God told me. Ah. Apostle Paul, God told him something. Look at it. Give me Galatians chapter 2. God told him, oh, I went by revelation to communicate to them the gospel that I have preached among Gentiles. And, but privately to them, which were of reputation. These guys have more experience than me. Lest by any means I should run or are drawn in vain. If it is true, you can. He said, ah, This is why people that have gone to this ministry way before me, sir, this is the revelation God gave to me. Oh. It's revelation, no? Oh. But he said, This is what I'm preaching. I don't think he went there to go and tell them, Hey, God told me, approve it. He went to submit his insights to men of reputation. His insights. Hey! If it is you and I, who are they? You will say, You know more than them. Is on his side by revelation. Lest at any time I had run in vain or I was running, what I'm doing now could be in vain. It shows a man that he is submitting to authority. Is there? Is there? The man that what God told him, God didn't tell you. He says, Sir, this is what I'm teaching you. You, with your experience, will say, Ah, I don't have this insight, but it's not against the doctrines of Christ, that Christ is Lord. It's not against love. It's not against idolatry. So, go ahead. I may not have seen it, but what you are teaching does not run against the things that makes us who we are. Go ahead. Give me the next verse. Do you understand it now? Paul was submitted to authority. Neither the next verse, neither Titus, who was with me being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. He was saying, look, I'm preaching to circumcision. And that, because of false brethren unawares, brought in who came to privately spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that it may bring us back into bondage. Next verse. To whom gave we a place, Pastor David? No! Not for one hour. That the truth of the gospel might continue with you in Galatia. Next verse. But of these who seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it makes no matter to me. God accepts no man's person. But they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me spiritually. But contrary wise, when they saw the gospel of circumcision was committed to me as a gospel of circumcision to Peter. You see, this man has his own grace. I have my own grace. 
For he that wrought effectively in Peter to the apostleship eh, was a mighty in me towards the Gentiles. Wow. Look at verse 9. When James, Peter, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given to ah, these guys are different grace. Oh. They can be preaching to post they are getting that they are giving that to Christ. They felt that I don't have that grace. Does not mean God has not given me the grace. You are succeeding somewhere where I'm not succeeding. Now start condemning me. You see? He said, they gave me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship. That we should go to the heathen and they will go to who? They perceive that you have the grace to bring women to Christ. I don't know how you do it. We are going to continue the work of God. That is why. Let me tell you why. This is a passage that created and generated uh, controversies. Because later, later, you now see when Peter now got to Galatia, he saw Peter. They were eating. That was why he challenged Peter. Sir, you are the one that told me to be doing this, sir. Now you are also now scared. That was why in the same passage, read it. He said, so one day now came, I was doing the same thing you gave me permission to go and do. And I was having success. And then Peter came, was eating with uh, them. And then somebody came from Jerusalem, they got a church from Uncle James. And when Peter saw them, Peter quickly washed his hands and stood as if he was not there. Ah, ah Peter! And even Father Bass, that both of us got the calling, also moved away. Ah! So I challenged Peter, Sir, what we are doing here? You gave me permission to do it. I came to meet you in privacy. We look at scriptures together. In public, you are doing something else. In private, you are doing something else. It's not right, sir. We told you respect, okay? Double standard. Hypocrisy. That was what happened there. Because we have to read it in context. That was why he challenged Peter. Because Peter had given him the go ahead to preach it, to live it. Don't live a rebellious life. It's not good. Rebellion is like into a sin. Isaiah 14, the devil was the first rebel. You know that. The Korah, if you look at Korah's life in Numbers 16, verses 1 to 33, Bible speaks about Korah. Korah was the grandson of Levi. Let me tell you what happened to Korah. Read it on your own. From chapter 1. Korah was a grandson. Dathan and Abiram. Three of them. They looked at Moses. They said, you this Moses. Come, come. You are taking too much yourself. Who do you think you are? Are you generally anointed? We are also of the priesthood. Ah, they, they challenged the Moses' authority. Constituted authority. In other words, are you the one that carried the anointing? We also have the anointing. So Moses was upset. It was Moses and Aaron they were fighting. So Moses now called them. He said, ah, you sons of Levi, will you also fight for the priesthood? Is it not enough that God has given you the grace to be Levites, to work and minister in the sanctuary? Because the priesthood belonged to Aaron and his own sons. Levites were a group. You are to support the priests. Aaron was the high priest. His own sons will be the, will have the priesthood. Why are you people also challenging and you are eagerly looking for the priesthood? Shouldn't you be happy with where God has uh, put you? He's there. Look, listen. Tomorrow, bring your, your sensor. Eh? That thing they used to do to Larry. Bring it to church. We will see who God uh, is with. So the following day, Moses still went to go and meet God. God said, let me take it. No, no, don't kill them now. Don't kill them. Just show this way that you have called me and your own. I beg. Defend us. So Moses now took the elders. Okay, go and call, call her. You are here. Call Dathan and Abiram. That was why he got angry. Dathan and Abiram in the house. Eh? Who is calling us? Moses. I beg, tell him I'm not coming. Moses. I'm not coming. Tell the man up. They refuse. They said they are not coming. We are not going to come. Tell him. We are not obeying him. We are not coming. You can do nothing to us. Ah. That was, Bible says that they now got Moses angry. He now prayed the prayer. Say, God, please. Church, I beg. But then don't give them common death. Give them uncommon death. Let their death not be normal. So, <laughs> Hey, Moses now pray a prayer that meekest man pray the most dangerous prayer. Uh, uh, hey, die. let their death not be common. That was like the first time God said, Don't worry, their death will not be normal, fall down and die. This is earth will open, they will swallow, I will close. It will be open and close. Boom, that, boom. Quickly, speedily. Rebellion of Korah. 
be careful. Those of us that are in ministry are the ones that are usually rebels. Those people that have the call of God on their lives are the ones that usually rebel. Did you notice? Of the three that I read to you, Cain, Balaam, Korah, two of them were in ministry. Be careful. Manage your anointing. Don't let it destroy you. <laughs> Korah felt, what do you mean? What you are doing, we can do. No big deal. Because ah, his name entered the book of Jude. Rebellion of Korah. God was against it. Rebellion of Saul. God was against it. Show me one passage in the Bible. Show me where God condoned rebellion. One. You can't find one. Because God sees the devil in every rebel. When God sees you, he sees the devil. Because he remembers what the devil did. In the kingdom against him. The devil was even thinking of taking charge to do a coup against God. Fighting authority. Standing against anything that stays in the position of authority. You just don't like authority. That's America. Everybody does that. Is, no, we wear pants and bikini. We'll go out. That is rebellion. They do things that are not a... Uh, if you ask them, what do you mean? We can do it our own way. It's rebellion. Against tradition, against what is norm, they say they will do different. Man and man, you not marry. You will marry. Okay, to tell you, we will marry man and man. We will marry man and dog. What will you not do? Okay, we'll marry dog. Come and do your worst. Rebellion. It's a spirit of rebellion. You don't know it. They call it freedom. They call it liberty. I call it rebellion. It's all about, I will not be under anybody's authority on earth. There are people like that in this world, in this church, who are not under anybody's authority. No biological father, not boss at work. Even boss at work is struggling to control you. It's mom, mom that is controlling you, not the boss. Because they will not pay salary, that's why. They, that's why. Do you know that the problem with Nigeria now is nobody wants to serve anymore. Haven't you noticed it? Everybody is CEO. Oh, Pastor Teru, you don't know. Everybody is CEO. You don't know. Those days, eh, I used to have a very good brother. His name was Anayo. Kana Anayo. Very good man. Paul Strong was my first partner supporting me in ministry. God has always blessed me with great Ibomen. I was a young man doing ministry, he was once funding it. One day I went to his house. A very rich spare party. I must have seen like 16 people living in his house. Young, young boys. I said, what are they doing here? He said, they're my boys. They, in our Hebrew land, they will learn this trade under me. They will, eat, they will not get started. They will stay here, eat Eba together. After 10 years, 15 years, when they free, I will give them freedom one by one. I will now set them up. He told me everything. That was the first time of understanding that system. They call it apprenticeship and internship. And I will set them up. So why they are here? They are under authority. If I say jump, they jump. If I say sit, they sit. Say go by six them, they go by six them. Come back at twelve, they come back at twelve. Today, how many people are doing apprenticeship? You don't have apprenticeship anymore. Everybody is CEO. It's part of the rebellious spirit. You don't get it. I don't want to be under anybody's authority. You don't. You're laughing. It's part of you saying I don't want to be under authority. I don't. I want to do it myself. I am CEO. Nobody's saying can be CEO. Do you have experience to be CEO? No, I don't need experience. I need anointing. Okay. I need gift. You're a writer. Hey, let us teach you how to stay under her for three years, five years, eight years. Let her teach you. No! No! I can write myself. Myself. You don't know it. What you are fighting is the word authority. I mean, it's a serious, salient issue. I will show you from scripture today. Is a thought that I'm hoping I will arrest. We have soldiers here. We have to go on. We have to arrest thoughts. Read for me. Give me Second Corinthians chapter ten. All of you, listen to this scripture. Second Corinthians chapter ten, verse three. Please listen to me. You all know it all. Second Corinthians ten, verse three is a very important scripture. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war. Are you with me? Next verse. Next verse. The weapons of our warfare are not what. They are what? Mighty through God. To the pulling down of what? What, what are these strongholds? Stronghold means something that is holding you. Holding you. You're under. You're there. You're there. You're there. You're there. You're there. What are they? Number one, casting down images of your mind, thoughts in your mind, and every high thing, high thing that exalts itself against 
seek the knowledge of God. The Bible. She's on the Bible. Now, and then, I love this. This is my best one. Somebody read with me. Say, bring him into captivity. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. Can I paraphrase? Arrest every thought to be under God's authority. Let's check your thought. If your thought is wild against Christ's authority, there's something wrong with you. And I'm saying, these things came from the West, America. These things of you being independent can be a wrong thought. A wrong, can be a wrong thought. We need to arrest it. I am under, I want to place you under arrest. Bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's our job. It's our job. No, a man can marry man. No, that's the wrong thought. And what is it? How is it wrong? So I'm in the spirit praying. How do I arrest this thought? I won't be tight anymore. That's the wrong thought. Why? Why was that tight? It's a wrong thought. It's fighting the knowledge of God, fighting the Bible. Let me arrest that thought into submission and authority of Christ. I can sleep with my fiance. No good thing. We're going to marry tomorrow. It's a wrong thought. How can I arrest that thought? Into captivity, into, into submission to Christ, and bringing into captivity every thought. Do you know how many thoughts we're fighting here? As I'm preaching, do you know how many thoughts are fighting my thoughts? How many thoughts are rambling and angry with me now? As I'm speaking this, no, I'm not angry. No, 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 why? For where? So where? There's a battle going on now in the spirit. A battle going on. Some thoughts are saying no. Some thoughts are saying yes. Some are saying I'm mean to submit. We're battling and wrestling. I'm bringing into captivity every thought. Rebellion starts with a thought. I don't need you. I don't need God. I don't want to be under authority. Rebellion starts like that. You don't know. Comes in different ways. A thought. We're fighting thoughts. We're saying, is this thought in the Bible? Is this thought, does it carry the spirit of Christ? Does it carry, does it, does it support the word? So the thoughts you carry do not support the word. So what do we do? We now fight it. We say, hey, forget the Bible. And hey, maybe those are outdated. They are outdated. If the Bible, so you start now changing the Bible because you are trying to fight God, fight his authority, fight the word. And the social media is helping you. God says, it is not good for man to be alone. You say it's not bad for woman to be alone. It's not bad for man to be alone. Are you not challenging God's thought? I'm not. I'm talking that when God said that, God didn't know what's happening today. In many ways, we fight God's thought. We fight to the point where people like us are beginning to lose the battle. We're beginning to submit to your thoughts and arguments and debates because we don't have enough arsenal from God's word to challenge you and there are so many more against us. If you speak about divorce today, you are gone. Don't talk about divorce. Don't go there. Don't go there. Feminism. Thoughts. You say, we don't need men. A woman can be alone. Who cares about men? So we don't know. It's a thought that's against the scriptures. Against the Bible. It's fighting God. Fighting scripture. Fighting the knowledge of God. And you don't even know it. You're all just sitting down there thinking it's just an opinion. It's a spiritual thought. Bringing into captivity every thought to submission of Christ. And you don't know it. Many of us think, oh, no, no. We just, we just, just my opinion. It's not, it's not an opinion. A thought can be a view. can be an opinion. Am I communicating? So you become what? A rebel. Somebody say rebel. Because you are no more under authority. And I know I got you all quiet. Because I touched some areas where you are angry with me. You're a rebel. If you have all those thoughts, challenging scriptures, the day you start to say, forget the Bible, you've become a rebel. And I've seen many Christians tell me, forget the Bible. So show me there. Listen to me. Play it safe. You don't have to obey the scriptures, but don't ever challenge it. I don't have to obey it, but we never challenge it. Let God be true. I choose to
to be a liar. I may be struggling in areas. I will not say because I'm struggling, God is wrong. Be careful. The devil is messing up with your mind. Be careful. Be careful. Am I communicating? Because we keep thinking because I'm not obeying. That means we must fight it. No, no. You can just agree with me. I have issues. Oh. But this thing is right. I'm always wrong. I'm having issues here. Yeah. Do you get the point now? I don't want to be a rebel. I don't want to be a... Oh, gosh. They are keeping quiet. It's okay. I don't mind. This such a message will make you angry. It's okay by me. Because if we have rebels today, we are here to... Somebody say it again. Arrest. Only two people said this. Because people don't want to be arrested. We will arrest your thoughts. We will arrest, what? We will arrest your thoughts. Bringing into captivity. Then the next verse now says, having a readiness to revenge disobedience. When your own obedience is fulfilled. That's what, it's just, that's what it, that's where it comes from. This is just speaking about rebellion. Thoughts, imaginations, views, opinions. Then if I tell you, you know what I'm saying now. The all kinds of thoughts challenging God's thoughts. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, challenging that thought of heaven. God's thoughts are being challenged every day. He says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. As after five, my ways are not your ways. As the heavens are higher, so are my thoughts higher. So we need to find a way of bringing his thoughts into our mind so we can start living Christian life. You can't be a Christian without God's thoughts. I can tell you a Christian, but don't have his thoughts. Rebellion starts here. Venom starts where? It starts where? And the thought that is challenging today, that I'm scared of today, is the thought that, shh, you don't have to be under anybody's authority. It's your life. Live your life. Listen to me. That thought is from the devil. It's a thought that will produce a rebel in you, not a radical. I don't want to submit to anybody. It's my life. It's my world. It's my thing. I don't want to. So nobody will tell me what to do. I will, tell, I will do what I want to do myself. Eh? Oh, CEO of your life. Eh? So many CEOs. It's a very, what I'm preaching today is very serious. Many years ago, man. Many years ago, there are some people in our church here. Many. Many in our church here. Many. Our leaders. Listen, people don't understand authority and control. I just laugh. Because they don't understand spiritual matters. Some of them will not travel without saying, Daddy, I'm traveling. Reverend, sir, I'm a leader. I'm under authority. I'm going to Badon. Let me just inform you. I'm not going to say, Don't go. I'm not going to say, You must not go. I have enough on my plate. But some, there's a woman I know, I'll mention her name here. She could not travel to anywhere. As she travels a lot, she would always call me, send me a text, send me, Sir, I'm out of town. I won't be in church on Sunday. Just let you know. I will send her, I mean, God bless you. God keep you. God provide for you. God preserve your journey in Jesus' name. Authority in her mind. I'm under authority. How can I just go without telling him? It's just, okay, am I forcing, am I controlling their life? I don't know. People think, hey, you want to control us? Who's controlling you? I have enough on my plate. It's just a symbol of authority. It's salient, but it shows who you are. It's, it's only salient, but it's, it's not, I don't have experience. It's nobody's demanding. It, it, control is different. What he say, I must control what to eat. Anybody in this church that can come out, come out now and tell me I came to your house to tell you what to eat, not what to eat. Come out here and come and tell me now. I come to your house, come and go to your kitchen. I say, what are you cooking here? Why are you eating this one? <laughs> come out now, boss. You've been here for almost 30 years. I don't come to your kitchen. Say, what are you eating? Why are you drinking potato? If I come there, those I go to visit, I stay in your living room, I spend 10 minutes, I pray for you, I leave. I'm not going to ask you, uh -huh, so uh -huh, what is the color of your pillowcase? Don't use blue, use red. That is control. That's cult. We don't do that in photo. I don't. I understand my authority. I understand my line. I don't cross it. But I don't think you understand yours. Because many people, I tell them, I'm not your father. I tell you, it's not by force, my brother. Because I don't see myself as authority over your life. I don't. You can be there. I'm not one. I'm not one. I don't see myself that you can say, there's nothing you can tell me is my pastor. How? You travel, you don't tell me. You buy things, you don't let us know. 
Some even buy houses and buy cars. I don't know. Some can even buy land. Say, Pastor, come and pray. One man took me to very, 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 very far to go and prove our land. <laughs> I won't mention the man says, my son. He begged me, you must come. Ah, that day I kept traveling. He said, I kept traveling, traveling. Kilo day. We travel, 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 travel. I was never, and I, wow. When I go to that place, that is a land. He pushes this is a land. Yes, I just pray. I said, ah, this man is torturing me. Father, because he knew the place of authority. I blessed the land. Enter my car. I drove back. It's authority, spiritual matters. Spiritual matters. Different people relate with you differently. As they understand spiritual authority. Or authority generally. Take spiritual out. Just authority. How can you be living without being under authority? No matter how old you are. Authority is spiritual. Authority is spiritual. You may not mean you're becoming a rebel. Authority is spiritual. Nobody wants to know. I don't ask, ask anybody here. Uh, bless your land. Have I ever asked you for offering or money? Authority is for your own good. It's for your own good. God, God does not like rebels. He not like rebels. I'm going to round, round up soon. Korah rebelled against God because he was famous in verse 3. He was a grandson of Levi. Be careful. Don't let your popularity make you a rebel. I wish I can give you seven things about Korah. Grandson of Levi. Famous and popular. Those things can make you feel well. You can do anything you can do. Numbers 14 verse 9. Joshua begged them, do not rebel against God. He was begging them when he went to spy out the land. Only rebel you not against the Lord. Please, fear ye the people of God. Neither fear them. Please. They were angry. They picked up stone to stone him. Because he was begging them not to be a rebel. Not to be rebels. He said, don't be rebels. Please, I beg you. It's there. Let me give you this scripture, then I'll now go to seven signs. I'm going to round up seven signs in five, ten minutes. This scripture, or this thought, is very profound. All of you listen to me. This thought is very profound. I've given you thoughts to explain to you why rebellion is not good. The most profound of all thoughts, apart from the fact that Jesus himself was a radical not rebel, is the fact that God Almighty, God Almighty, God Almighty, respected the authority of Pharaoh. Moses, go and meet him. Tell him, let my people go. If he says no, I will force him to let you go. Ten, please. God could have said, all of you begin to go. If you try, I will kill him. He respected authority. Go and meet Pharaoh. Pharaoh, let my people go. I won't let them go. Okay? I will deal with him. Because I believe in God himself. But you are not saying, God, God, do, God, do, God. Do. God himself respected authority. God. God. God, Moses had a call. And man of God, I'm called. I can't leave for time without coming asking your blessing. Okay, nobody said don't, don't leave. But everybody that God called in scripture, God said, go and seek permission to go. He said, let my people. Why would God submit himself to fear? He didn't. He's just explaining authority. Is somebody listening to me? Is that in your Bible? The book of Exodus is there. This was God's mandate, God's mission, God's assignment, God's task. The anointing was there. God called Moses. But God said, Moses, we cannot take them rebelliously. We must do it in the right channel. Go and seek his uh, permission. It was not until his firstborn son died. And I said, you can leave. Go ahead, let's go. But you have to give your consent. <laughs> Nobody is saying God did not speak to you, Moses. But the man said, I've not heard God. You're not going. Okay. God, please let me tell him. And God brought 10 plagues to tell him. So God was telling him through 10. God said, carry them, begin to go. If they try to attack you, I will kill all of them. God, yes or no? God could have killed all of them. Yes or no? No, God said, no, don't do that. Go and tell him, let my people go. Because what I hear them say is that God has spoken to us, don't need any pastor's blessing. Moses needed permission. <laughs> you, you, you know God more than God. I'm telling you, this thing is very important. Many churches have been destroyed out there. Many young, young boys just go and break churches, start church, start this, start that. Say, God told me, did you get your pastor's blessing? No, I don't know who is pastor. My God is bigger than my pastor. <laughs> I'm anointed. Kayama, Kayama, okay. Go with your Kayama, Kayama. It's okay. <laughs> they speak in tongue for you. Tio, tio, tio. Okay, their tongue is 
So you look, their, their tongue is stronger than your own tongue. Okay? Go with your tea, your tea, your tea. Rebellion. They are rebels. And they struggle under a closed heaven for years. Ministry is not growing. They don't know why. You are a rebel. God does not bless rebellious people. Go and check it. There's how many people are struggling out there. Not because they lack the anointing, because they lack the blessing. They don't know it. Spiritual. Spiritual issues. I beg you from today. Bring into captivity every word. So check yourself. Say, God, help me today. You will sanctify your own thought. Which thought could be rebellious? And I don't know. At home, at work, in church, in my family. Which thought am I massaging that could be rebellious and I'm not aware? What is going to say to you that you should stay under bondage and be there forever? No. But just make sure you follow authority for your exodus, for your exit. I'm not saying don't leave. Follow authority for your eh, exit with authority. Do you get the point now? Very important. Let me give you the seven signs that you're a rebel. <laughs> seven signs that you are a rebel. Seven signs. The first one. Because I'll just read them because of my time. You are, when, when you are not under authority, especially spiritual authority, listen to me today. I am speaking as a pastor and as a coach, as a life coach, to especially young people and older people here. There are some people here that have been here for 20 years, 18 years, sorry, 18 years, 15 years, following us. They are not authority. Some are just new. We as a church believe in authority. Now, there are different kinds of authority. There is spiritual authority. There is terrestrial. There is earthly. There is your boss. Be under authority. Some of you are under authority to your fathers. Some are not. Some are saying, Reverend Kassali is my father. The people that make me their father. And I try my best possible. I'm not perfect. To make sure I guide them with counsel, with scripture, with prayer, the right path to take. When I make mistakes, I say, come Martins, I think we are wrong there. Take this one. But this the person knows I got my father's blessing. Am I communicating? But to stay and live your life without being under authority is ungodly. It's not scriptural. That's what I'm saying. It's not biblical. Nobody can tell me that it's biblical. Absalom rebelled against David. Wait for your turn. You soon be king. He rebelled. He died eventually. Rebellion is a sin. Rebellion is to fight authority. That's it. To fight it, to oppose it, to say rebellious people are in a are rise in opposition or armed resistance to established authority. They just resist authority, control, and tradition. They don't want even tradition. Say, no, I don't want it. I think some people just like to fight, they just challenge tradition, just challenge everything, just challenge. Ah! Just even when there's no reason, just challenge. Number one is you are not under authority. That's the first major sign. Number two, you don't take correction or criticisms in good faith. Some people, ah, my dear, let me correct you. No, you always take things personal. There are people I'm always afraid of correcting because eventually I'll be crying because they will take it uh, personal. Some will take it so easily. I've known Pastor Terry for many years. I, don't, I can't tell you how she raised me. People don't know it. She will come and say, I'll say, my business, I said, no, 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 no. She understands authority. People don't understand that. Authority is spiritual. I've corrected people. They will just say, yes, sir, we'll go and do it well. Some will say, no, I must correct you, Pastor, for trying to correct me. So I, I, I listen to them. Because we don't know it all. But we have to understand offices are different from persons. Rebellion. We have to fight it. Young people that are anointed will ruin their lives if they are rebellious. Nobody say you're not gifted. Nobody say you're not skilled. Nobody say you don't know how to do IT more than all of us. But can we help you, teach you, guide you? No, don't guide me. No, no, no. Look, you, have, you know the skill. I have experience. Let me teach you how things work. General principles. No, you can't. This one I know more than you, sir. Okay? Okay? You find fault easily in the system and with the establishment like Korah. You just look for fault. There's nowhere that there's no fault. There's no perfect church in this world. You go to a church, all you're looking for is their fault. Sunday, Sunday, you find one fault. 52 Sundays, 52 faults. Can I ask you, have you found any good thing? No. Why? The sound is poor. The, this is, okay, can you fix one? I'm not fixing. I'm here to be the ministry of fault finding. 
We will create a new ministry for you. Make you H.O.M. <laughs> then you'll be reporting to yourself. <laughs> I mean, what is saying? You should not say we are perfect. The way you find the faults, and you must find them to say, I want to fix them. Can I help in this area? The burden is very spiritual. Some people find fault like there's, there's a word for it. Number four. Do it. Uh-huh. They must give me their sign today. Ah. Uh-huh. Okay, you don't obey simple rules of life and are opposed to all that. This is very important. When I call simple rules, uh, there are so many things that are generally accepted. Am I right? That a child, until he leaves the house, is under obedience to the parents. My wife, one of the things I like about my wife when I met her, she was a professional. She was working in ExxonMobil. She, she had trained in abroad. She had master's degree. She had school. She had an accountant. When I met her, she was living in her mother's house. She had money to rent a flat. I said, no. I asked her one day why. So whenever I want to see her, I will go to mama's house. I said, this woman be disturbing us now to see. She said, no. I meet you in my mother's house. Today, young girls will say, it's no matter. That's old school woman. Old school woman. Okay. Okay. You are not under. Hey. I met her, they will go there. We we'll talk, we we'll talk, we we'll talk. We we'll eat, eat, eat. What are we doing? Talk and eat, talk and eat, talk and eat. They will go. Before we go married. <laughs> Be careful. Let's arrest that thought. It's not godly. You may think it is. It's independent. This I'm going to. Being independent mindset does not mean you are always right. Be careful how we push. I like strong women. My wife is strong. My wife has a very strong mind. She's independent minded. I like my wife for that. But she's also still under. People don't know the difference. My wife has her own views on life, on this, but she submits all those views to husband who come home. I think this right way. We debate, argue. I said, go and do it. I said, don't do it. She won't do it. She will come back until we are, we'll argue, argue, argue until she's okay. Go and do it. She will wear me out. Go and do it. But if I won't be worn out, I won't be worn out. I said, no, not alive. For where? Because this is spiritual. On lighter matters, I don't kill myself. I've never fought my wife over carrot. There are Christians that fight their men, women over carrot. Carrot, you are jobless. You are petty. Carrot. The things they fight their spouses for, if you, if you hear, you will run. Carrot. She didn't wash it well. She didn't do it well. Pastor, if you see where she did it, she didn't cut the carrot well. Carrot. <laughs> Sir, I told her I like my carrot cut like this. Like, carrot. You can't carry and eat carrot. You are fighting your wife over how she cut carrot. Carrot. In your mind, is that man a serious man? Carrot. <laughs> carrot. You create a major crisis over carrot cutting. You bring pastor into a home that you're having issues with your wife over how she cut carrot. You're making pastor jobless too. <laughs> because I go there sit for 30 minutes. Didn't I tell you to cut like this? Every week she cut like this. Uncle Carrot. <laughs> How many of you understand me? Yeah. Eh? I would just tell you, Auntie, cut carrot for him. He can chop and make it. It's not to eat. <laughs> Do you get my point? For petty things we fight. Okay, number five. Number five. Oh, I'm going backward. You experiment with different ways of living your life, especially against the norm. Now, this is where I am a bit more careful with young people. I love experiments. I love trying new things. But be careful not to make that the way of doing things. Some people just don't like tradition. Have you seen people just want to do what is against the norm? For instance, people dress like this. They say, no, me, I would dress differently. I wear my own micro I would slit it here. I would do my own differently. Why? <laughs> Nobody can tell me what I do. In my body. In my body. This is the norm. No, I, would, I want to fight against the norm. You know, they do things just to experiment. Just, and they try new things. And it's part of it. It's this. It's my life. It's my this. I don't want anybody to, against tradition. It's one things that we've made for years. We fight it. Say, it's not right. It's not right. Let's do it differently. What is wrong in choir people sitting here? Pastors say, no, it's not good. Let them sit here. Okay, let them sit there. Let them sit at the back. Choir sit at the back. Yes. So they just come forward. They sing, they go back to the back. Why? Something different. But it doesn't make sense. It doesn't mean creativity. That's their name, creativity. 
<laughs> I like it, my dear, creativity. Number six. So, because we do all this without us knowing that these things can be hurting us. Number six, please. Uh-huh. This is let me mention, let me mention this one. I think there's a way I put it. I don't know where. They keep telling me how to go. Okay. You are an independent-minded person. And you don't care what people think about your individuality. Now, this is not, this is very salient. I'm not against independent-minded. But be careful how you push your individuality. Be careful. I'm not saying, like I said, I love strong, independent, entrepreneurial women. I like them. And men. I don't like sissies. I like that are strong. But be careful. The key issue is authority. Don't forget that. Be careful how everything you do, you're not resisting authority consciously or subconsciously. You're not fighting everything authority. Be careful. Make sure it's not an it's not authority you are battling or fighting. Be careful. Some people's independent mindset is to fight authority. What it means that they can't tell me what to do. Mm, that's what they want. Nobody can tell me what to do. That's the idea. Nobody can tell me how to live, what to do. That's the idea behind this. There's independence here. There's none. There's what you call liberty and rebellion. When it gets to the point where you're saying, nobody can tell me what to do. Hey, that's what I'm fighting. That thought is not godly. That thought is what I'm fighting today. I'm not saying, I must tell you, or Alice, choose the person to tell you. But to say nobody can tell you is bad. God gave us a choice. Choose one. Choose the man you will stay under. Who's, uh, but don't say you will not be under anybody's. Uh, I hope you get it now. I'm not against you saying I don't like daddy. I don't like Kasali. Uh, but go look another pastor. Who you like to say I will submit to. To say I will not submit to anybody. I will submit to pastor me. You know that pastor me? You've not met him. Dangerous pastor. That pastor, dangerous pastor. Pastor me. Pastor me. You don't know him. You don't know him. Very dangerous. Pastor me. <laughs> eh? We judge. We don't know, ah, we know his church. I judge. Pastor me. I judge. <laughs> My self congregation. Pastor me. Of what I judge myself, congregation. You don't know him? Dangerous pastor. <laughs> ah, God of heaven. On his emulation. You question everything and challenge the way things are done. Be careful. This is a rebellious spirit. Without you knowing it, it comes subtle and it's here. Thoughts. It's here. It starts here. You just want to say no. You are rebelling. You are fighting the system. Fighting the people. <laughs> I'm alone. And nobody should tell me what to do. It's rebellious spirit. It's of the devil, not of God. God will never, even God himself submitted himself to authority. He told Pilate that. He told Moses, go and meet them. God did that. God knows how to save you. Even when the wrong people want to put you in the fire, he saved Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. You get the point? Let's be under authority. There's nothing wrong with living a life under authority. Nothing wrong with authority. He even gave you the go ahead to choose who you want to submit to. So God even said that to you. I tell interning couples when they come to my classes, I tell them three things determine successful marriage in life. Number one, number one, be each other's friends. Number two, have a governor to submit to. When Jesus did what? Performed the miracle. He said, give it to the governor first. Authority. The governors, of course, will have had enough to drink. He said, go and give it. John chapter 2. Give it to the governor first. Authority. This is go and serve the people. Give it to the governor first. So give him Christ recognize authority. Give it to the governor. This wedding, no. There's a person in charge, chairman of the reception. Give him the dream first. And it's not me, it's in your Bible. It's in your Bible. You, you, so nobody is saying you shouldn't just live your life. Don't live your life recklessly in the name of creativity. Don't damage your life. There are marriages here that are going through crisis because of this singular word, authority. I call it Yoruba, Onibawi. And I'm not ashamed of it. 
I've been teaching it for 25 years. Some don't like me for that. That's their business. Some do. Some have obeyed this simple thing. Me, I have only Bawi. I have the person I submit to. How can you exist without being under anybody's? Are you God? Shall we rise to them? Rise to them. Put your hands together. I'm hoping this message will change our church and change our lives. Because I've sensed the spirit of rebellion in Futa. It's very strong. I'm saying it today as a pastor. Listen to me. I've been to other churches and I know what I'm saying. I'm saying I'm sensing and I've sensed the spirit of rebellion in this house. And very strong. You have to say to yourself, God, help me to submit myself to under spiritual authority. Not that the person will control you. So you have your choice to choose who you will call my father. And you see how your life will be going well. Daddy, it's been with me for many years. People here, and you keep making progression. Progression, you keep going up. I'm telling you. Because God blesses authority. There's a way around, there's a way God works. I don't even know how, but that's how it works. He operates within authority. God operates within that sphere. So you won't even know why. You'll just be blessed. You won't know that because you're under authority. It's just that simple. People don't understand it. That's how God operates. You find that you just be making progress. You won't know why. The others are not. You're just making progress. When God cursed Cain, God placed a mark on Cain. He said, anybody that tries to help you is in trouble. My wife and I were discussing somebody very close to us, a pastor. The pastor very close to us. I said, swear that what she said, ah, no, I don't, I don't want to talk to him. Oh. I said, no, I'm sending him. He said, no, don't send him to me. Oh, we're talking. I said, are you seeing the person? I said, I sense only that this person has a curse before he joined us. And we just embraced the cursed person. We've tried to break it, but the man is still not under authority of anybody. Ah. I said, okay, we have to find a way of making sure we push a cursed man away from my house. I don't want to, because Paul said, lay hands suddenly on no man. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 22. Neither be ye partakers of other men's sins. Keep yourself pure. Very scary scripture. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 22. You mean Timothy could have partaken of other men's sins? Not your own. Keep yourself because the man will contaminate you. <laughs> I see a glow here now. The man will contaminate you. I just say glow. Something like a glow here. The man will contaminate you. So be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Don't just go and begin to You are touching the man that is already carrying a curse. You are embracing the curse without you knowing it. It's there. Paul told Timothy, it's my Bible. Spiritual things. God cursed Cain. Any man that tries to help you is cursed. Because Cain killed Abel. The way of Cain. And Adam and his mother pushed him away. God pushed him. He was not under authority of Adam or God. You're on your... Don't live like that. I want you to please prayerfully submit your thoughts to God's thoughts. Not my own thought. Stay consciously in prayers. If you have said your wife, hold your wife and say, Lord, we consecrate our marriage. If you have not just said, Lord, I bring my thoughts to the submission of the thought of Christ. I consciously will never resist everyone's mandate, everyone's assignment, consecrate me, please. Who knows if somebody here has been freed and been, been delivered? And so who knows, who knows? Who knows who this glory is meant for? Who this glory? Who knows who has been delivered now? Spend the next one minute, pray sincere prayers. Say, Lord, help me. I don't want to be a rebel because rebels don't get blessed. Rebels don't get blessed. God will not bless a rebel. There's nowhere in scripture. God will not bless a rebel. God will never bless a rebel. God will never bless a rebel. Just say, Lord, help me. Just say, Lord, I want you to bless me. I, I want to be under your authority. Submit yourself to his authority. Just consciously say to God, Lord, be my director in charge. I don't want to be the pastor of my life. Be my pastor, my shepherd. Help me to submit to you, Lord. I want, your, I want my life to be under your guidance so that your blessings can show forth in my life. Submit yourself to him. There's a way God protects and preserves us. There's a way God takes care of everything that we do. We are under authority. Apostolic authority, prophetic authority, pastoral authority, the authority at home. Just say to God, Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. Help me 
to be under authority, spiritual authority. I want to be under your covering, your covering, your covering, Baba, your covering, your covering, your covering, your covering, your covering, your covering, your authority, your authority. I want to be under your authority. Guide my life. Those of you watching at home, pray that prayer. Those of you watching at home, pray that prayer. Ask God to help you to be under authority. Wherever you are, say, Lord, I submit myself, submit my faculties. I arrest thoughts in the name of Jesus. Every thought that is against the thought of Christ, we arrest them today. We bring them into captivity. We bring them into captivity. We bring them into captivity. We arrest them in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Listen, if the Lord has called a man to start a work, seek pastoral blessing, we'll release you. If you want to start something, a new shop, a new business, don't ever go and start without God. Pastor Tunnel, come and let me bless my shop. Spiritual. I found a scripture when Sarah was oppressing Agar in Genesis 16. Agar was angry. Agar was angry. Agar left. Left in rebellion. An angel of the Lord met her. Agar, mistress of Sarah. As far as everyone is concerned, we still see you under her. As far as we are concerned, we call you by Sarah's name. Ah, what matters is how God calls you. Even if he calls FCEO. God said, Agar, Sarah's mistress. <laughs> God still called her by Sarah. Where are you going to? Where are you coming from? She said, I am angry with my mistress. I am angry with her. God said, go back. How can God support oppression? God said, go back and submit. What you are doing is rebellious. Oh. She was simply pregnant then. She had not put to bed. This is rebellious. Oh. I will not bless it. Oh. She went back. Twelve years after, man. Twelve years after. She put to bed. Sarah had Isaac. Isaac was being mocked by Ishmael. Sarah was angry. Sarah went to tell Abraham, send this woman away. The woman, the bond woman. Abraham said no. God came and said no. You have to obey Sarah. Let her go. And then she left. You know the story. She ran into crisis. There was no water. The child was crying. The child was about to die. That same angel came back and said, Hagar, not Sarah's mistress anymore. We now see you that you are free now. I will bless you. Look at that place. There is water there. Go and drink water. God knows when to bless an exit. And God knows when not to bless one. Be careful. It was when he left with Abraham's blessing. God now said, I will take care of you. From today, you are my concern. You will never suffer. Your son Ishmael will be a king and a prince. Twelve princes will come for me. Because I'm taking care of you. Don't worry. Because I told him to release you. If you had left 12 years earlier, you are you would have been on your are you with me? Nobody is saying don't go, but go with a blessing. Put your hands together. Go with a blessing. Go with a blessing. Say the angel came to say, We we'll bless you. The angel came to say no. The angel came to say yes. Can you imagine how God works? God is not against your independence. He just wants to do it right. Go through the right channel. That's how God works. Father, we thank you. One more prayer point. All of you, please. Let's pray it spiritually. This is a very, all of us who pray for this church. Bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Very powerful prayer. Can you please pray and say, Father, we stand today as a church. We arrest every thought, every rebellious thought. We bring them into obedience of Christ. In the name of Jesus. Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer.